All right, so if we're trying to make an animation out of this, um, you know, we think back that this is how our animation started. It's almost like the side of those bowls for the ancient people that were making them, right? But we could kind of see if we focus on one pose at a time, right? We see the legs moving and we have these different poses. Um, so what we want to do, though, is to put these on separate layers. Does anybody know how we might be able to do that in Photoshop? How can we take this flat image and how could we put that onto separate layers? Richard, what do you got? Well, not really. Rasterize is what we did when we converted a smart object to a, uh, uh, like some kind of other object that's editable. All right. Um, what else? Anybody else have any ideas? So like, and actually I have it kind of finished here, right? Where we would see instead of all the cats being on one full layer, we have them on separate layers, right? And I'm showing this in this way. So how did I get from this to all these? Vincent? Yeah, uh, bait, you're very close. All right, so how can we put it on its own layer? You could, you could copy and paste. I'm going to show you a quick way to do it. All right, and if you chose this one, this one's a little more difficult too. Oh, and uh, you probably want to remove the background also so that in like animate, we can put in our own background. All right, so with any of these, and let me backtrack before the layers. I would want to unlock my background layer, then use maybe my magic wand. I always start with the tool that can do the heavier lifting, right? And maybe the less clicks. So if I use the magic wand, it does select all that white around there. And then I can press delete. It lost a little of this guy and, and that in there though. So maybe I can go back and use the quick selection. I mean, it's not really critical if you have that to be like somewhat transparent for this. Questions? Yeah, that checkerboard pattern just indicates it's transparent. Vincent? Uh, your layer uh, may be locked, as I was saying. So click, find your layer palette, and um, uncheck the lock button. Okay. So if I use the quick selection, I can be a little more selective here. And then, as I was saying to Vincent, yes, we do want to unlock that background layer. And now I can delete. And I can then start going in here and getting rid of the rest of this stuff. So I'm just going to do it a little at a time because I know that magic wand got too much. So I'm just going to use like the quick selection tool in here. And that does a little bit, doesn't kind of select as much. I'm using the, if you press and hold the magic wand tool, the, uh, the middle option is your quick selection tool. Right? Do you have the magic wand on your toolbar? And do you, can you press and hold it? Does it give you any options? All right. All right, so this would be though kind of working with this. And let me just show one more step before I come around here. So we'd remove the background and then um, you can use a couple tools to select the individual poses. Um, the marquee or the lasso tools are very helpful with this one because the, uh, the, the poses overlap. The one with the cat, I could have done a lot easier by just using this marquee tool because they're not overlapping. I can just select it. And what we're going to do, no matter how you select, is right click and say layer via copy. So that puts it makes a new layer from what you had selected in there. With this one, I'm going to use the marquee tool. All right, you can use the regular marquee and just kind of draw a box or this isn't a box, obviously. It's a selection area. If your hand is a little shaky, I'll show you another one in there, but that would be the case here. Right click, layer via copy. All right, and we can see 
that now that layer is just that pose. Now very important, as you go on to your next selection, you always have to go back to the original layer because let's just imagine, right? Well, actually we have this on. If I have my layer, my next layer selected, and this was the other tool you maybe want to use the polygonal lasso. If your hand's a little shaky and you can't get a good line, I'm clicking and I'm letting go. And I can make more of a kind of angular lines. And it, I don't have to be super precise because our background's transparent. We're not going to see any of that anyway. All right, but I can go around here and do it that way. Now, when I do layer via copy, why did that work? Did I have, that shouldn't have worked. Yeah, there's nothing on there. So really, it, normally there's an error message, right? Because if I'm on layer one, the second pose isn't in that layer. However, it is in my bottom layer. So that's why it's really important to come back here. And even though I didn't get an error message, I do want to select the layer that actually has that image into it. All right, and now I can go in here and if I reselect, and now I'm using again the uh, polygonal mark or lasso tool. Yeah, one of the lasso tools, because they're, since they're overlapping, if you used like the, the rectangular marquee, uh, you would have parts of one pose with the other one. All right, but once I get around it, now I'm going to do right click layer via copy. And now I can see that I have, if I turn off my composite layer, right, using that same vocabulary we just talked about, it's the combination, right? So that's, now I can see I have one pose on that layer, another pose on that layer. All right, so I'll come around and troubleshoot and see, make sure everybody's caught up. But that's what you should be doing right now is making as many layers as you have poses. All right, so once we get to launching the software, we have kind of our normal start screen uh, asking us if we want to use any presets and that sort of thing. All right, um, as you can see, there's some presets for character animation, social, you know, gaming. But really, if you were to look at all these different presets, what are what's changing in these presets? Think about even our other programs. It's really not that much different. What did we see different between our presets in Photoshop or, or even Premiere? They're what? Well, it's not. It could be for video or print or animation. What's changing is your width and your height. All right. If we look at all these, they're really. It's just a change in your width and height. I'm going to go to character animation because that's like what we're doing even though it's a very basic form of it. And then I'll choose full HD and look at that. Look at those numbers. 1920 and 1080. Where have we seen those? Yeah. And we did that for Premiere, right? If we looked at our sequence settings, it was the same frame size. What is this measuring, the 1920 by 1080? We're going to use this full HD and just make sure on the bottom that you have Action Script 3.0. It should be there kind of when we choose that preset. Um, if you use HTML5, they're kind of more compatible with uh, being posted online, but you're not going to be able to create the same type of animation. So make sure that you have that Action Script 3.0 as the platform type down here. All right, then we're going to do a create. All right, so a quick description. Uh, we see a lot of similarities, right? We have our, our stage as we were talking about. We do have a toolbar. You can see there's kind of a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop in here, but it is kind of limited. You have a selection tool, transform, the lasso, some brushes, the eraser, shapes, pen, text paint bucket, um, eyedropper, and the hand tool. So it's kind of limited in the toolbar. We do have a timeline, but now we're in frame base, all right? Our time code is not going to be hours, minutes, seconds. 
uh, like we had in Photoshop or Premiere because we are in animation the frames are very uh, specific and detailed and we need to manipulate them um, and then we have our panels all right so a lot of similarities um, to get our Photoshop file in here we're gonna say file import and where do we say we want to go to the library or stage uh, the stage, I, I think I said we want to do the library because if you delete from the stage, then you have to re-import it again. So we want to import from the library. All right, so if, if you're having an issue, it doesn't see your Photoshop file. Down here, you have like a filter. So make sure it's on all files. And then we can go in here and I'm going to choose my cat poses PSD file. And they give you an option here. Um, I guess you could have extra layers, and they, uh, but you could select what you have in there. We're gonna select all of them, all right? Yeah, save your, your PSD file, all right? And as we're saying, so since we imported it to the library, it doesn't go right into our stage automatically. What you have to do is go to your library tab or your panel, and now we see our files over here. It's kind of like in Premiere, right? We, before it goes on the timeline, we import it to our library, and then we can kind of decide what, when we want to bring it in. So if I expand this arrow over here, I see all my layers that I created in Photoshop. So let's grab our first pose, and now we're going to drag it onto the stage. All right, I see a lot of people, and I understand where we have habit. You're not dragging it onto the timeline, you're dragging it onto your stage. So kind of try to retrain your brain in saying, all right, we're not in Premiere anymore. We are now in Animate. So now we have this image placed on here. This is our first pose, right? And it really doesn't matter the placement of it right now. Basically, what we're going to be doing is overlapping them. We're going to make the cat or whatever character walk in place, and then we'll have it kind of walk across the stage. All right. So um, let's next go in here, and we're going to turn on what's called onion skinning. All right. Because when we drag on, actually, you know what? I want to, we won't, we'll go a little at a time, and I'll show you the benefit of that before I do that. Um, so go to your next frame, all right? Each box on your timeline is a frame. You can see that this is like five up here. So each, we're gonna click on the second frame. Then I'm gonna right click, and I'm going to say insert blank keyframe. All right, so we talked about our vocab. We know that frame one has something in it. Frame two does not. Now, if we drag over pose two onto there, we don't really know where that first one was to align it. So what we'll do is press this button, these little circles here called the onion skin tool. And now I can see that the purple one is my previous frame. And now this will be our second, our, our next one. Hello. Hi. Hello. So we take our, and assuming we have our onion skin on so we can see what the previous frame looks like and you can kind of like I think you can change the focus of this as far as how many frames you're looking at oh it helps from the right screen yeah so you can make this like wider or actually I guess that's not working the way I thought all right all right so the process is click on the next frame then what do I do who remembers insert blank keyframe good job Brian by right clicking and then what do I do after that? Yep, dragging my third pose. All right, so that's all we're doing. We're just inserting keyframes, blank keyframes rather, and then dragging our artwork over into that. And that's what turns that circle to empty to full. Anybody? All right, I know, yes, we do have some people who ordered. Okay, thank you. Thank you. 
All right, so I'm going to call this catwalk. Oh, has multiple meanings. And if we want to test it, we can do a control enter. Moving very quickly. So we're going to have a running cat here, I guess, or To slow this down, right, what would we want to do? Like, think about it conceptually. How would we slow this down, Vincent? Change the frame rate. You could change the frame rate, yeah, I guess, uh, to like instead of 30 frames per second. Actually, can we do that in here? I don't know if we can do that once it's created. If I do document, uh, frame size. Here we go. So, yeah, actually, you know what? Like 12 frames per second um, is typically, I think, uh, an animation frame rate. If we do a control enter on that, that's a little bit slower. I guess that's the easy way to do it, all right? And I'll, yeah, I'll show you that if I can get out of here. All right, so what I did was I went to um, modify document and then. When this pops up, we can change the frame rate. I changed it from 30 frames per second to 12. That's one way, because then instead of showing, you know, 30 frames, which we don't even have, we're showing fewer frames and then it's slowing it down. Another way to do this is to actually like hold the frame for a longer period of time. So if I select my second through fifth frame by selecting the first one, hold the shift key and select the last one. I can just move this over so that now it's holding frame one for four frames. All right, then I can select the last three, move that over maybe to 10. Select the last two, move that over to 15. And then the last one over to 20. Now, the only thing, what would be awkward about that? We see that we are, do we, this last, um, pose would not be visible for four frames like the other ones were. So the other option we can do here is go to frame 24 and we can insert a frame. So that's going to basically hold that. All right, so this should be a really slow walk now because I slowed down the frame rate. Yeah, that's like too, sm too slow now, right? So I could go back to my modify Usually you have better like kind of clarity at a higher frame rate. So I kind of get that same effect though doing that. All right. So now we have this cat walking in place, right? Based on a series of five pictures. And that was control enter to uh, test this video out. All right. So let me test one thing out. To make the cat walk across the screen, we could just move our poses, right? I guess that would have been another way to do this. So we'll show, I'll show a couple ways of doing this. So the first way here, we had these different, we had it walking in place. And uh, I guess what we could do instead is let's, let's kind of remove our, if you want to save this as one version maybe, Let's kind of, though, start over, all right? Or at least go in here and remove all this stuff. All your frames on here. So I can select the first frame, go all the way to the end, and right click and say remove frames. So now we're kind of left with nothing. Now we could go in here, we could get our pose, we could maybe then go to frame five and insert a blank keyframe. We could put in our second pose. We can move this into place here. Time. So this time, instead of having the, the frames overlapping and, and in one place, we're going to just now go to like frame intervals of five. So I went to frame um, five and I inserted a blank keyframe. 
So I'm just going to back up here now that I have my thoughts collected. So I'm going to go, instead of choosing frame two, we'll do frame five, do a blank keyframe, and then I'm just going to bring the pose two in there. All right, so we can still kind of get some alignment going with that. I'll go to frame 10. I'll insert a blank keyframe, put in pose three. Go to frame 15, insert a blank keyframe, put in pose four. And then frame 20, insert a blank keyframe, put in pose five. Now, I can't really see, so this kind of went off the screen a little bit. Do I have room? So here's where our onion skinning, I think we can, I know there's a way that we can, there we go. I can see all poses at once. So if you look up at the top here, in this like, this layer above your frames, you have kind of like a bracketing of, of sorts where you can expand or reduce the amount of onion skinning you're seeing. So I think my first pose, yeah, was too far to the left. So try to like spread them out so you can see them a little bit better. Uh, and we don't have anything cut off. You can hold the shift as you're dragging so that they don't go up and down. They'll stay on a line. So all we did there was instead of putting our keyframes on, on you know, each successive frame, like one, two, three, four, five, we did multiples of five. And instead of them overlapping, we put them next to each other. So now we have the effect that it's walking across. Now this is still not very smooth though, right? It's still, there's gaps in there and it's maybe too quick. So there is one other way and we actually, we do have time for it today, but I'm gonna make sure that everybody kind of has this method going. And that will be created what's called a net. All right. so. We saw walking in place was kind of smooth, um, but it didn't walk across the stage. If we made our poses that were kind of spaced out, then we get the effect that it's walking across our scene, but it's kind of like glitchy and laggy, right? So we're going to do it one last way, which will be creating what's called like a nested movie clip, all right? So we think. If we remember, anybody remember what it means to be nested? I'm just going to remove all these things from my timeline. We're going to start over one more time. When we're saying it's nesting, it's one thing inside of another, right? When, uh, when we did Premiere, we did that, I think, for some of our clips. Um, I don't know if we did that in Photoshop, but all right, for time, all right? Let's start by dragging our first post. So we cleared out our timeline one more time. All right, I'm going to drag pose one onto my stage. All right, my cat is facing the left, so I'm going to put, put it over here. Oop. And it should be in frame one. Look, I had my playhead at the end, so it put it at that last frame. So I'm going to just remove these frames, but try to move your playhead to the beginning so we have it occurring at frame one. All right, so our, our third method of doing this we just inserted the pose on our first frame, and then we're going to right click it, and we're going to say um, create motion tween. All right, now it says that it can't be tweened, you must convert it to a symbol. Yes, all right. Now we could just make the, don't do this, but I just want to kind of show you, we could just move the cat over here at this point. And we see this line that pops up, all right? So if we only had like an object that didn't like change in position, we see it will now move across. But that doesn't look very natural, right? So I'm going to undo that so I don't have my motion tween. But I do want to make it into a symbol. 
So I'm gonna, I can do modify, convert to symbol, or I can press F8. All right, and I'm gonna call this like walking. So I did F8 or I went to modify and convert to symbol. The type of symbol is a movie clip. All right, so when this pop-up window comes up, I named it, you don't necessarily have to, but it is important that you have the type as movie clip. All right, so F8 or modify and convert to symbol. Everybody good there? All right, no? Do you have one pose on the first frame? All right, and then you press F8 or modify and convert to symbol. So in our library now, we should have this other item that just got created. This walking, uh, it looks like a gear on there, all right? So now what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be creating a timeline within another timeline. That's where the nesting comes into play here. So to do that, like, because right now we just see this main timeline. If I double click it, you know what, and maybe let's do something just so that we know which timeline we're on, all right? If you double clicked it, you should see on the top that it kind of um, expanded it like we see in Illustrator when we double click. It says scene one walking. Go back to scene one. Let's just make a new layer, drag it to the bottom, and let's just make a rectangle behind it. Because I know when we're starting off, it, it's easy to confuse things if you're on your main timeline or the sub timeline. So on the, your main timeline, it should just say scene one here at the top. Make a new layer and drag it to the bottom and just draw a rectangle with any color. I'm coming. Instead of trying to do it and trying to catch along. So we made these two layers, all right? We made this into a movie clip. So I'm going to double click my symbol and now we can see we're in this nested timeline. So really I'm just going to be repeating the process we did before. So we'll insert a blank keyframe, we'll turn on our, our onion skinning, we will put our second pose over the first one and so forth and so on. I'm going to do this at frame 10, insert a blank keyframe, bring in my third pose, go to frame 15 insert a blank keyframe, bring in f pose four, go to frame 20, blank keyframe, pose five, and just so that there's a nice looping and the time is the same, I'm just gonna hold that frame at frame 25 basically by saying insert frame. All right, so right now we have in this sub timeline, our cat is moving in place and then if we go back to the main one, here's where it's a little bit different. The addition is now we can create a motion tween. All right. And I can say now the cat moves over here. And you can see all those sub objects in there. I'm just going to fill in my second layer here by inserting a frame. And now if I press control enter, we see the cat the poses are moving as it's moving across the stage. All right, so I think that looks a little better than the other two ways that we did this. All right. So, um, I mean, you saw that I did it quickly. I know, obviously, I've done it more, so it's a little easier for me, but there aren't a ton of steps. I'm going to try to, I will type this out in words also if you want to give this a crack tomorrow. And it will be uh, in the video format too, so you can watch it. All right, so. All right, the last part of our animation will be to export it to a video. So we're gonna go to the file menu, do export, and we're gonna say export video or media, because if we do movie, it will make it an MOV file, and we want uh, H, uh, MP4. So if we select that, you see your format here. Check your preset also. Um, I always like to do match source and that will give you your high quality and then on output that would be where you're going to specify that. We should also have entire movie 
and our sizes should all be the same. So once we do that, it's going to, and press export, it will launch Adobe Media Encoder, as we see here, and it processed that very quickly. And even though it says MOV here, uh, if we look at our file, and that gives us a confirmation there, but if we look at our file here, uh, it is actually an MP4. So then you could post that to YouTube and then post uh, the, grade, uh, the link for that.